Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I've got some bad news for you. I think I figured out what's going on with Masters 25, and it's not good. Remember how everybody who knows what they're talking about, like large single sellers and me and you know, just everybody, they're like, this has to be good. They have to put more valuable cards in this than Iconic. Iconic was garbage. It was sub 240 EV on the day of release. Nobody is going to buy that. And as it turns out, nobody bought that. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a reseller and you open 10,000 boxes or if you're a random person and you just don't want to pay $240 to get $200 worth of cards on average. It really seems to affect everything because remember, stores could not move it. So that is a confirmed theory that if there's not enough money in the set, normal everyday average people are not going to buy it. I care about getting a lot of bang for my buck. I get a lot of value for my money. That's what I care about. Even before I was a single seller, I cared about that. So trust me, at all levels, people care about the return because, I mean, if I open something, what are the odds I'm going to get a card I actually need? What are the odds I'm even looking for a card in it? I just want to pull an expensive card because then I can trade list it, which of course is the term that you use when you meant to say buy list and trade them to your friends, but you didn't feel like making it two separate statements apparently. So yes, people are going to trade list the hell out of what they open and they know that. They'd rather have a $20 card than a $10 card. So if the EV is double, then they're going to want it. So here is how the magic world works in in general here um wizards will print um 50 000 boxes we'll say that's probably actually not terribly far off so then they know okay we just printed exactly what twelve thousand of of each rare or whatever it would be i think it'd be like thirty five thousand. anyway that's how many are entering the market but not really because what really causes a single card to go down is for single sellers to get stuck with them. If nobody's buying them, they're all going to keep undercutting each other, especially on eBay and even between the big competitors. I mean, you think like Card Kingdom doesn't go check Troll and Told and see what they're doing and if their price is way lower, they might maybe adjust it if they're not moving very many? On eBay, everybody undercuts each other. It's just a matter of can the, the buyers buy the cards at such a volume that the low ones go away and they kind of buy it up to a higher price because nothing is left but the higher price ones. So single sellers opening the, the boxes and selling the cards out of them, that has an awful lot to do with the uh, price, obviously. Because that's direct supply. It's supply to the sellers. Then you've got people buy listing the cards, which, you know, it, it's always going to be profitable because they pay like 60, 70, 80% for most cards pretty much everywhere. And then they sell them for 100%. That's a little oversimplified, but it is what it is. But, um, you know, if, if everybody buy lists a card because nobody wants it, and then also nobody wants it so nobody's buying it, that will accelerate the price drop because it'll fall on the buy list and it'll fall on the retail list too. So you've got... Big, big, big vendors opening them. You've got big, big, big vendors getting sent things in the mail from other people. And then I guess you would say like your LGS itself, you know, if they have a single in stock, that would affect the market a little bit because instead of having to go online, you get it there. So it's kind of like a buffer zone or like a capacitor, I guess you would say. Dude, that'd be awesome. I'm going to name my shop card capacitor. But you know, if they're selling it cheaper then that would drive it down and just everything's a chain. So at the end of the day, when Wizard says, should we print 50,000 boxes or 55,000 boxes? If they guess wrong and they flood the supply, that's not good. And remember, quite a few products are print to demand, which means if people still want the product, they will do another print run of it. Now the lead time is really bad, so it's actually kind of hard to do that. But um, in general, that's what you would want to do then you don't have to guess, you just get it right. I mean, it's simple, just, oh, did, did we run out? Okay, make more. Real simple. So they'll dial it in, but remember, every thousand boxes that they print lowers the price a little bit more because if they printed 35,000 of every rare and the market, you know, just all the buyers in general, all the players of the game, collectors, whatever, just people on the buying end of it, if they only want 33,000, the price is going to fall. Because when the price falls, if it goes from five bucks to three bucks, then more people will say, well, for three bucks, I guess I'll buy the card, you know, whatever. So then the demand quite literally goes up. I know, using the word demand is not how it works, blah, 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 economics, nobody cares. So what can you do about it? Wizards just print less boxes, print an appropriate amount of boxes. Or two, you can just start the box EV at $500 so that you can devalue it even more by printing even more because people want even more because you put even more value in it. I mean, you'd have to sell the cards down to 50% if it's a $500 EV just to get to 250 And honestly, people keep opening boxes until the EV is about 175 in my experience. Uh, for a master set, I should say. So print less or put more value in it. Real simple. I mean, those are almost the same exact thing, technically. So what's the third option? Is there another strategy that they can use? Yes. 
chuck the product into a black hole. Now, you're probably thinking it to yourself, Des, yes, that would work. Wasn't exactly thinking of that, though. A little bit out of left field. Well, I don't mean literally, I mean throw it into a metaphorical or economic black hole. And for once, I'm not actually referring to Venezuela. Oh. Hey guys, don't forget to buy your oil-backed cryptocurrency from Venezuela. <laughs> not sponsored. No, that's a real thing. They did that. They made that. Anyway, um, so wizards can sell them to people who that's the end of it. That they The cards do not hit the market. Because remember, I said big bulk openers... Okay, they're supplying it directly to the market. Like, they are the market. Uh, then you got the buy list people selling it to those people who put it right on the market. So the players are involved in this. Then you got trade between people and trade and purchases at your LGS causing people to not buy as high of quantities online. So that's okay. So the players are involved. You know, if you as a player buy a box, you up the supply. Unless you don't do anything with the card. You buy the product sealed. You open it, and you are the last owner of it at least for a reasonable amount of time, which I would say eh, six months to a year, maybe even three months. I mean, who's gonna be bu like who's buying iconic singles right now unless they just coincidentally needed the card? So you got to ask yourself, who does that? Who would just buy a box or a pack, open it, and then that's it? Goes into their bulk collection, goes into their binder, not the trade binder, like a collection binder. I mean, it's kind of narrow if you think about it because collectors will just buy like one of every foil, one of every single, one of every card they like, whatever. They don't tend to buy, you know, sealed product. They just buy exactly what they want because that's how a collector works. Now, somebody was just like, I want to build a cube out of all these cards, you know, all, all cards from M25 or all master sets. I've seen that. Uh, Modern Masters 1, 2, 3, EMA, Iconic, and this one. Then I would say, yes, whatever they open goes straight into the cube, and they keep it, and that's that. They sell off very little. Now, who takes a $100 Jace and puts it into a cube, though? So it's like, you know, to an extent, they're going to sell off the high stuff, unless they just consider it 100% cash. But if they don't sell the low B stuff, the low B stuff is the, the cards that get really hit. Like, if a card was $6, it's a lot easier for it to go to 1 than for a $50 card to go to 5 the price is lower because the demand was lower in the first place or the existing card supply was higher. Well, what's the other one? Drafters. I mean, some drafters will draft cards and then just keep them. They're like, oh, cool, here's some cards I got as a side effect of doing what I do and playing the game. Like, they didn't even really say, I'm going to purchase three packs today, but they effectively opened three packs. Now, I can't be the only one who money drafts even in a fairly serious draft because you're drafting in a competition with, we'll say, 16 people or whatever, eight people, whatever it is, and there's prizes on the line, we'll say like six booster packs, but if the EV of the six booster packs is, I don't know, 60 bucks, we'll say, <laughs> which that would be pretty bad. Oh, but here's a $150 foil that you can draft. You're going to draft that because congratulations, you just won the event. So yes, drafters do occasionally take, you know, a card or two that's very expensive and throw it effectively into the singles market. It's just that drafters in general are more likely to not put the singles into the singles market. So if they sell the drafters, a lot of them will just throw them in their draft chaff box and be like, oh, cool, I'll reference these later. Or, oh, I'll put them in my uh, my binder and organize them eventually, or I'll buy list them eventually, and then they just never do. Which, I hate to say, oh, that's what drafters do. I mean, that's just what some people do. It, 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 some people do that with their prize packs. I mean, who doesn't have bulk with some good cards in it? I mean, not me, because that's not how I do things. That's not how I open things. That's not how I filter things. So now, remember what Wizards said about, oh, we want to make this a draftable product. Why are they so bent on draft? I thought it was just on the surface. It's like, no, because, you know, it, it's another reason to buy the product. Like, maybe you weren't going to buy it. Oh, but you really like drafting, and, you know, these sets are amazing for draft. Like, any master set is going to be better for draft than any standard set. That's just how it works, because they could put anything in it. They designed them specifically for draft. I mean, they're basically on par with, like, a draft set, like Conspiracy. I mean, some additions were questionable, but I guess they were just for money. But other than that, yeah, it's it's a draft set. Counterspell, Brainstorm, welcome to draft. So the real reason they do that is because drafters are the most likely to take cards and they're, they're just gone. They take product, they open it, doesn't matter what's in it to an extent, and those cards are now gone from the, the entire market as a whole, the entire singles economy. They never enter the singles economy. So the more people you can get to open boosters and open entire boxes of boosters, preferably, and then not 
put the singles on the market in any way, shape, or form, not even trade them to other people at their LGS, which would be considered on the market because it's a replacement for them ordering it online. If they can do that, then maybe they can bump it up from 50,000 boxes to 55,000, and those 5,000s were sold uh, to a black hole, multiple black holes. So I think that's what they're doing. Now, the other thing is people will buy it just wanting the cards. It's like they get in their mind, I just want some cards from Masters 25. They're all legendary. I've been playing for 10 plus years, and these cards are amazing. I remember them all. I'm going to keep every single thing that I open, and this is such a cool like collection thing. Like It's, it's a great addition to my collection is just anything I pull. So instead of being concerned with just money and trade and deck building, that's it. They're just like, cool, I want this. This is awesome. I like this. They get excited about the set and the cards that are in it where they want to pull them because they remember them. These two things are word for word what Wizards just said in their whoops, sorry about Iconic Masters, here's what went wrong and here's why this one's different article. Some called it an apology. I wouldn't go that far. It didn't seem like one to me. It was more like an explanation of them trying to like cover their butts. But as you know, that doesn't go very well because wizards couldn't find their own ass with both hands. Awfully hard to cover your butt then, especially when it involves PR or an announcement or the written English language. <laughs> but anyway, back on topic. Okay, people who get excited about the cards, they want to keep them all. It's not even in their mind that they would trade them away or sell them. Um, like I said, there's always going to be oh, a $100 card. You don't just ignore that and put it in a trade binder unless you're some kind of crazy person or you really like that one card. Because then you got the card for the cost of one booster and you didn't have to buy it. So, of course, you'd keep it. But for me, I'd be like, uh, rent, um, groceries. Um, I'd rather go to Burger King 20 times with that money. Yeah, I'm representing the Magic Thick Boys. Burger King, what's up? Once again, hashtag not sponsored. To be perfectly honest, last time I went to the Burger King, I went to like the Hood Burger King on the other side of town, and uh, I think I got food poisoning. I was really sick. Maybe you should keep the card, okay? Maybe you shouldn't trade it for Burger King money. And if you'd like to donate to my Patreon to help with impending legal fees when Burger King sues me, link in the description. But seriously, we got a Patreon-only Discord, and it's awesome. I don't know who the hell we is, it's just me, but it is the, the greatest Discord channel in the history of the world. We actually um, built a wall, made Mexico pay for it, and it keeps out all the net deckers. So remember what Wizard said in the article. They said, we made this exciting. They didn't say we put better value in it. We made sure the EV was good. We made sure people want to financially open this. Because let me just reiterate, that is a sure thing, okay? People will order it until Wizard stops printing it or until the value drops to about $175 per box because we all pay about $125-ish. After shipping and fees and a profit margin because we're not going to do this for free, that's what it is. You want to sell more product? Port more valuable cards in it. it that, it's as simple as that. But beyond that, Wizards wants cards that never see the market. So instead of just being, hey, we're calling it Money Masters, have a $1,000 box EV and try not to stab each other over it when your LGS opens. I mean, I'd pay $240 for a $1,000 box EV and I would probably stab somebody for it. But if you make it good for draft and drafters just kind of hang on to the cards as a whole, and then you make it good for collectors and exciting and people want to buy it because they're like, oh, there's so many of my favorite cards in it. This is so cool. I just want to buy the product. And selling or trading singles is not the absolute primary thing in their mind. That's who you want to get your product to first and foremost, because that's like a whole different thing than just the easy way out, which is, oh, put another couple hundred dollar cards in it. Because remember, eventually you'll have printed everything, and they know that. So that's why they're keeping these very tame. I don't think the EV is going to even clear 350. At this point, it's looking like we'll be happy to clear 300. So they're keeping it real tame, just appropriate where people will be like, okay, I'll open, you know, a couple cases of it. Okay, we'll, we'll you know, the big seller's like, we'll open 100 cases, whatever. It's not nuts. And then because there's not some giant rush on it and everybody's, you know, everybody's sold out and that's it. Like the first run of EMA where just nobody could get any boxes because there just wasn't enough to go around. They're making sure the supply is there and it's not, you know, nuts, but it's worthwhile. And then the people come in and just black hole the cards, remove them from the singles economy. So if you could do both, you make it worthwhile opening and you make people remove the singles, ta-da, you've got a perfect product. So I unfortunately fear that's what they're doing. Now, 
that backfired in Iconic, okay? Iconic was Iconic. People were supposed to be like, I remember that, I remember that, I remember that, that's a famous card, I love that, woo! And they think that the entire reason that Iconic went wrong is because people weren't excited anymore after 78 days. What really happened in actuality, in reality, is people were not sick of looking at the cards or seeing them on a list. I mean, they're either in my hand or they're not, that doesn't even make sense. They were given th almost three months to sell off and find every single card that was being reprinted before the price crashed, except everybody thought that and the price crashed. So on release day, the boxes weren't worth a damn thing because the cards have been devalued because everybody buy listed or TCG player, eBay, whatever, card shark, they went and shoved them all onto the market and then that crashed the price because everybody's like, well, I better sell it. You know, I got, I got three months. I better kind of rush out, you know, within a month, preferably and just sell off every copy of every card that's in it because otherwise I'm going to lose money when they reprint it to oblivion. Well, you can't give people that much time to do that. I mean, my phone whose volume is on mute just reminded me I sold an item on eBay. Okay, I have it on true vibe right now. Apparently 0% volume is not mute because this is not earth and I'm not in reality right now. Up is down, nuns and clowns are hugging each other, cats and dogs are getting along. What the hell is this? Seriously, Android, get it together. That's right, nuns hate clowns. You heard it from me. So if they think this is just going to be exciting and that's going to be the difference between selling, you know, 25,000 and 50,000 boxes worth of like actual market demand. Oh no, 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 no. You can try as hard as you want, do new artwork, first time a card's ever been printed in foil, whatever. And honestly, those are kind of like meta things that affect the actual value anyway. They make this sentimental value, this additional customer demand because they just want it and that's that. I mean, maybe an extra 5% in sales that'll get you. I mean, I'm no expert. I don't look at the numbers and even how would they know what people are thinking when they buy a box? As far as I know, they don't really do surveys like that. I mean, not really. So if that's what they're thinking, uh, this is going to be another iconic. This is going to be just garbage. It's going to sell like crap. All the EVs are going to be crap because they didn't put enough good cards in it. And uh, I mean, right now, yeah, we got a, a couple 50 plus, but just look at the sheer volume of bad rares and especially bad mythics. There better be five fetch lands in it at this point. Not much else is going to fix this. Now that said, I haven't looked at today's spoilers, so maybe they'll turn it around today. Why did I make the videos in this order instead of flip-flopping them? Because I felt like it. So hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully it's a $500 box. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But right now it looks extremely concerning. I feel like I've seen this before because I have. I mean, this is like journey into next level bad. So we'll see where it goes, but you know, hope for the best, I guess. If you want a guaranteed good value, though, the link's been in the description for a while, but it's a good time to re-mention it. Discover credit cards. I got rid of my Visa card. That thing sucks. I didn't actually get rid of it. I still have it because that helps my credit score, but I don't use it. I, like, socially got rid of it. It, it is now exiled from my group of credit card friends. Discover has better customer service, just better terms, better everything, better rewards program. You get 5% cash back in certain categories. You get free fraud monitoring. They watch the dark web and certain criminal websites, mostly from Russia let's be honest that for your like your personal information your social for free 100% for free no strings attached no hidden fee no free trial nothing just you got a discover card you used it at least once in your entire life or I believe five years is the limit actually you use it once every five years if I'm not mistaken and you get free fraud monitoring and you can check your credit score for free every single month and it's a soft hit that will not cost you points and there's no fee to get the card. In fact, they'll pay you, if you use the link down below, by the way, 50 bucks just to get the card and use it once. And if you do it, I get 50 bucks too, which is a damn lot of money. Seriously, I'm broke, it's tax time, and I sold a hell of a lot more goods on eBay than I thought. They sent me a 1099, and I just about had a heart attack. Except then I realized that heart attacks are really expensive to have in America, so I changed my mind. Like, my heart, like, legit stopped for a second, and then it was like, oh, wait a minute, we don't have money for this crap, and then boom, just, like, starts, like, double-timing it, like, just to make up. So if you want to help me buy food that is much better for my heart than delicious ramen and heart-healthy, I don't know, what else do I buy that sucks? I actually eat really healthy. I buy a lot of, like, vegetables and fruit. If you want to help me continue that, but you're like, oh man, I don't have a ton of money because, you know, I'm as broke as you are, Des, you can at least get a credit card and it benefits you because the more sources of credit and the duration that you've had the credit and then the balance of your revolving credit, which means uh, accessible on the fly daily credit, the more you have available with the less used, ta-da, you get a credit boost. Like, it's enormous. So don't be the guy who turns 22 and then you have like 
a credit score of 650, you never knew it, nothing was ever in your name, and oh, everybody told you credit cards are so scary. Yeah, if you're an irresponsible dumbass who can't do math, they're scary. Other than that, they're, you know, listen to what Rudy says about credit cards. He was spot on about it. But yeah, you go to get a car loan or a home loan and you got no credit history, you are in trouble for on the order of years. Trust me, it happened to me. I almost couldn't open my business because of it. So do not get caught with no credit history. It is going to be an ongoing problem and it's going to ruin a significant portion of your life. And if you're like, no, seriously, I'm good. Um, Okay, sign up for the card just because there you go. Now you got an extra X you know, on your revolving credit. Immediately you'll get a, a, a benefit to your credit score. And then buy one thing for like $1, get the $50 credit because there's no minimum. You just have to use it at all in the first 90 days. And then you'll be giving me 50 bucks and then ta-da, you've got 50 bucks in statement credit, automatic. So then just go get gas two and a half times or whatever, depending upon your vehicle. And it's free. And that's it. I'm literally just giving you free gasoline. Hell, if you sign up for a Discover card, I'll come pump your free gas. You gotta live within like 10 minutes of me though. I mean, come on, let's be reasonable. So check it out. I wouldn't be plugging them if I didn't like them. I actually went to them and said, do you have an affiliate program? Not them coming to me. And just for the record, the last six people who tried to sponsor my channel, I told them all to piss off because they were super sketch. Their products were garbage and I didn't agree with them at all. But not the knife guy. I don't mean to offend the knife guy. That was just a misunderstanding. But the rest of them, a bunch of like pay to win, you know, Asian company design crap games and mobile, ugh, no thanks. So this one I believe in. I I use it personally every day just use it at walgreens today and i got a boatload of money back on cash back so yeah so check that out if you're interested and i will see you guys next spoiler